Well, good morning. I'm Pete Najeri, and this is The Take for Market Rebellion. And on this Wednesday, it's a hump day, of course. And wow, what an interesting couple of days we start off the month of June. Now, there's a couple of different things going on, but one of which is the explosive moves that we're seeing late in the trading sessions. We go back to Monday and you start, you, you kick off June, you get a late rally. Then yesterday, another late rally, market push into the upside. We, you know, the, the selling may and go away. <laughs> if somebody did that, well, you missed out on about 1600 points or thereabouts. And uh, now that we get into June, we've already increased by about 200 points. So, or 400 points rather. So we're really starting to show what sort of power there is in the marketplace right now. A lot of people are very questioning, like, why are we moving at the rate what we are and, and what's going on with the markets themselves? Why are we shifting from uh, all the nervousness? And a lot of that is getting removed from the market. You can see, see that right represented in the volatility index, something we were talking about in terms of the contraction of the big, large moves that we've had. We've had some movement of late, but we've also had that movement within a fairly tight range. It's nothing like it once was. So because of that, that's why we sit here with the volatility that continues to inch down a little bit each and every day, just a little bit getting pulled out of that. And now we were in that range of 27 to 31 yesterday, still hanging around that 27 level. So holding up so far, so good in terms of what we're seeing in volatility. But these markets, wow, the, the end of day uh, has been absolutely spectacular. And the movement that we've seen there, and and we've, we're have we starting to see a little bit more, more participation from different areas of the marketplace. But again, we finished up about 1%, call it, on the, on the Dow side of things. And the NASDAQ, which was struggling most of the day, actually had a pretty nice move late as well, finishing up about six-tenths of a percent. So the explosive move, a lot of what we were seeing yesterday, chips, look at the semiconductor, uh, up about 2% on the SMH. Another area that doesn't really get talked about enough, and I've been bringing up energy more and more and talking about oil, moving from 17 to 34, and now been pushing up towards 36, and it's just finally starting to catch on. I actually heard some folks on TV today actually address what was going on with oil because it's been stair-stepping, and we've seen that, and it's been moving pretty rapidly in terms of when you go back and look at this time frame, it's been a pretty significant move to the upside. Now, what area within energy is really starting to find a little bit of power? Well, don't look any further than the oil service names. Now, these are names that uh, absolutely were just hammered to the downside and, and, and recognize that. But been slowly seeing more and more participation there. As a matter of fact, yesterday, the OIH up about 5%. Halliburton, Patterson, some of these kind of names, not names that everybody knows Halliburton, they do Schlumberger, they may, but Patterson and some of the other uh, names, certainly not the household names that everybody looks to when they're talking about the oil services. But there are many names within that. We call those the beta names because they move the way they do. And we're seeing that kind of movement happen so far as we've started to watch the price of oil inch a little bit higher and grind a little bit higher each and every day. So yesterday, these financials, so many people said, oh, you don't want to touch financials. You don't want to get anywhere near these finances. Well, you've had a pretty significant move in many of these names over the last three, four, five weeks. It's been a pretty substantial move. Now, a lot of it, step step forward, two, maybe pull back one, and that's kind of been what, it, what it's been looking like. But the financials have been finding a little bit more love. They're seeing a little bit more uh, activity there. As a matter of fact, yesterday, American Express, it was City, both of them up well over 2% across the board. So when you look at those levels, too, I, I look at American Express approaching that $100 level yesterday. You look at City getting up and over uh, 51, then pulling back a little bit. But the real area within financials is fintech. When you look at some of these, you know, financial technology type names, and, and and when you say that, you're talking about Visa and Master and American Express, but you're also talking about Square and some of these other kinds of names, really PayPal, really uh, some names that have had a lot of strength and a lot of support. And we watch, watch a lot of those names. PayPal, wow, I thought I did really, really well. That stock just continues to move to the upside. And uh, so I've missed the last little bit here, but what an incredible run that name has been. I mean, uh, fortunately had a big chunk of that run, but wow, it just continues to move to the upside. I might have to reevaluate that one. Uh, today, what are we looking at? Well, as we reopen the economy, and there are a lot of different factors that are, are definitely negative factors that you would see, but the reopening seems to be the focus. And as, as that has become the focus, the markets just continue to move to the upside. As a matter of fact, right now, we were up about 250, 260 when we started. 
and right now, just five or six minutes into what we're talking, the, the take, we're up 320. We're up one and a quarter percent. We were up 1% when I started. And the NASDAQ, the S&P, they're also participating. I'll, I'll take a quick look. NASDAQ up about a half percent. S&P up also about 1%. Both moving significantly from where they were when we started just a few minutes ago. So we're one hour into the trading session. We're up about 320 points on the Dow. Oil services, once again, pushing to the upside. I mentioned that. Some of those names in Halliburton, Slubberger, definitely participating and moving and helping move that sector, I should say. Financials. Up nearly 2.5% when we started, probably even more now. But J.P. Morgan, Citibank, American Express, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, all those names, very strong participation to the upside once again. A lot of these names, again, everybody was very, very nervous about the financials. The financials offer several different things, in my opinion. First of all, you're getting yield. Second of all, you're getting incredible balance sheets. And, and lastly, has the, has the actual movement of the financials over time been extraordinarily great? No, but... I've also continued to bring up, and I'll, I'll bring up to you folks, the volatility that's been within the financials has offered another way, buy rights, another way of participating and creating something with companies that you feel are very strong companies, just not right now participating. Well, they are starting to participate a little bit more. So with that participation, with the option side of things as well, and the dividend yields that you're getting, wow, that's a pretty powerful combination. And I'm and I'm looking and seeing more and more people now <laughs> starting to talk about the financials. Industrial's up about 2% today. That's actually powering things to the upside. It's, it's a couple of names that don't always come up. UPS is one of those names, but Union Pacific, we haven't talked about the rails in a really long time, but that's one of the names that's definitely participating. We had some option activity just yesterday there. Raytheon is another one of those names. We talk about how for a while there with the industrials, it was it was a lot of the defense names that were really starting to push uh, the industrial space. Well, that's starting to broaden out a little bit more. We've talked about Caterpillar and some of the other names that have been participating as well and 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 piecing in a little bit of those movement from uh, the XLI if you want to take a look at an actual uh, the, the sector index itself. So semiconductors, it's up again. They just continue to power to the upside and it sort of switches what names within the semiconductor space are the leadership names. But Micron definitely participating today. They had that powerful uh, news that they released the other day about some of the strengths. Stock had a nice pop, then it started to ease back and a lot of people were concerned. You've got to be on top of these because they do move very rapidly. That stock got up towards 50, pulled back once again, but holding on to the majority of those gains. Well, today, adding to those gains and pushing back up a little bit closer to, to where the, uh, the stock initially popped before. Broadcom, Texas Instruments, we talked about that name yesterday as well. So, incredible morning, incredible start. I'll be on the halftime report today. It should be pretty interesting. A lot going on today, and we'll talk about volatility, which, by the way, trading around 26. I want to bring up volume one second because I brought this up yesterday, and we've been talking about the volumes so far in the month of June, and they've been a little bit low, and it's been a little bit surprising. But uh, the unusual option activity has been absolutely on fire, and we have been seeing more and more. As a matter of fact, yesterday I was extremely active, added many different names. I think by the end of the day it was probably five, six, seven names maybe. And this morning, because of this gigantic move right out of the gates, this big move well over 200 points right out of the gate, started trimming and taking off a lot of the positions, not necessarily just from yesterday, some were from yesterday. A lot of these names are going to be expiring, and I brought this up yesterday on Friday. So a lot of short-term trading, can, this, this trend continues, and you got to be very active and you've got to be very aggressive when you've got options that are expiring at a very, very fast pace. In other words, Friday, maybe even if it's the following Friday. But if things are moving, you got to have that discipline. We talk about discipline all the time. Have an approach. So, Chewy, this name has hit time and time again. Now, it's hit four times in about less than the last month. It's hit yesterday and hitting again today. So a lot going on somewhere behind the scenes right now with Chewy. And this is one of these names that, uh, you know, it doesn't come up all the time, but that's the great thing about the unusual options and the, and the seeker and the algorithms that we built long ago, John and I, it sniffs out just about everything. It doesn't distinguish between whether or not it's in a specific sector or anything like that. We are just looking for that unusual option activity. And that's what we're seeing. And Chewy has hit, as I say, multiple times today, Stock trading about 49.30. We got about 5,000 of the July 70 calls. Now, I realize, and I think that's 
ridiculously high. It does go out to July, so these these aren't aren't staying with the norm of what we've seen, like one week, two week expiration cycle. You're going out to July, which, by the way, really is only a month out, a uh, month and a half out. So it's pretty interesting. But paying about eighty cents for about five thousand of these, they've got earnings coming out on the ninth, so that that's a factor that maybe plays into this to some degree as well. But to see this kind of option activity is pretty strong. To see it continuous yesterday, today, like I say, about four times in the last less than a month. So a lot of activity out there. It's just one of the names. We have so many to pick from. I've got so many to pick from before I go on the halftime report. But we will be hitting unusual option activity there as well. So we'll have a lot to be talking about. Folks, educate yourself. Understand what's going on. If you, if you are interested in the options world, the derivatives world, and want to see how the leverage works because leverage was removed back in the financial crisis. And this is where there is some leverage, but with a level of risk and reward and, and understanding what that really means. The, our educators are the best in the business over at Marco Rebellion. We really love these guys. They do a fantastic job. So have a great day of trading. I'll see you at noon. And until then, I will see you tomorrow on The Take.